You thought Ace would be replaced by the Racer Zord? So did the President's enemies. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here and welcome to my review and spoiler discussion for Power Rangers Beast Morphers episode 18. I thought this was a really neat episode. I think it had a really cool idea that actually could have been even better and I was really excited about this one. I almost forgot about it because I read the description a while back. But it was like this idea of the Rangers' memories and everyone's memories surrounding it being altered to believe that Roxy and Blaze ended up becoming the Red and Yellow Rangers. And first when I read that, I almost thought they were altering reality in some way, which I think would have been a cool bit. But it was still a cool idea that led to some, like, that led to a fun episode, but I think it could have been even, sorry, I think it could have been an even cooler episode, but I still liked it. Like, we even got to see when they were altering everyone's memories, like a sequence of what they remembered, and we actually got to see Blaze and Roxy in the red and yellow suits taking the helmets off. Like, that was kind of cool. Like, I thought it was a neat moment. I hope that we get the head, civilian heads, for their lightning figures, so you can recreate that with the lightning figures if you want. But I thought that was kind of neat just to visually see that since that was supposed to happen. And I think that's a neat aspect in general of the setup for Beast Morphers, the fact that those two were supposed to be the Rangers in the first place. I, I like that, so I like that we're kind of reminded of that via that. I mean, there's all kinds of problems with it, so obviously for this scheme, it couldn't be long term because they would, all of us, they would realize that the powers weren't linked to them and that their bodies were there. Speaking of, there was something interesting with that because they used it to get into the base to steal their little transporters, or the super duper ultra, not ultra, ones that they had there. That was kind of like one of the main things they were doing. But the other thing was, is Roxy plugged a USB into her physical body and it didn't seem like Blaze did it. Uh, I'm not sure why or what this is going to accomplish, or maybe like plugging it into her, hey oh, it affects them both, like it has both systems infected with whatever, but I'm curious what that's gonna do. Maybe it'll have something to do with an upgrade form or something, or maybe like they'll become more powerful if the avatars and their physical bodies merge. I don't know, but I thought that was interesting. I thought it was a good episode for the villains in terms of they actually pulled off a plan. I mean, the Rangers obviously ended up getting their memories back, but the villains successfully did what they wanted to do. They stole the stuff, they got the USB plugged in, whatever they were doing, and the tag team of Blaze and Roxy, although still, hashtag Team Roxy, managed to make sure Vargoyle was out of the way because when he fought Devin, he wanted to download all of it. Begin the download! Download all of his beast powers that he stole from the Rangers, but he only had cheetahs because that's what was in the footage for Go Busters from when he fought uh, Hiramu. And Blaze and Roxy basically stopped Scrozzle from sending him the rest of the powers, so he was defeated actually in this episode. I was a little bit surprised. I mean, I know that we have the footage for him being defeated by Red Buster, but because they made such a big deal about him and kind of made him this more central villain figure for this arc, I thought he was going to last a little bit longer. That's what a lot of monsters are like that. I was a little bit shocked by that, but it, it's kind of nice to take you by surprise, and I also liked the way Blaze and Roxy did that, because there is situations every now and then when you have villain infighting, and whatever one villain does to the other because they're jealous often ends up impacting the villain's plans, and then they get reprimanded by the main bad guy, but I like that in this case, the villains were basically able to have their cake and eat it too, where they actually got their plan, their evil plans over other rangers, but they also managed to get rid of a competitor. So I thought that was kind of nice, and it was a nice way to see the, the villains shine for that. As far as the ranger memory stuff, it did end up affecting Steel because he's part robot, which is definitely an oversight on the part of the villains. That kind of led to him sort of guiding Devin, and so you didn't get as much of the usual tropes, which I guess is kind of nice in a way, but I kind of wanted to see almost see like a what-if scenario in a way of what this would be like because you only had a couple scenes of Zoe being like oh I'm supposed to be in the laundry and then Blaze and Roxy showing up and them handing over the stuff but I thought it would have been kind of interesting to just explore that dynamic for a little bit. This would have been a cool two-parter where you have the Rangers believing it for a bit and it would have had some really interesting and funny scenes but ultimately it just amounted to a couple scenes like the laundry thing. I don't even recall Ravi really getting any moments outside of him walking with Blaze and Roxy and helping them load the stuff into the, the truck and stuff like that. So there was really nothing of the sort with that. I mean, Devin kind of had like, oh, I'm not a Power Ranger. What are you talking about? I just like video games. Did I tell you I liked video games? Steel's like, I'll just teach you to be a Ranger, which is why he knew how to do all that stuff. And I don't know. I just think that I did enjoy it, and I think it had some cool moments, but... I just feel like this would have been a cool two-parter because I think there's a lot of potential for this type of storyline and I was a little bit disappointed that some of the more interesting aspects for the Rangers kind of went by quickly. Um, sort of related note, 
Ben and Betty in this episode were acting as security guards as they were in the first episode. And it's really funny because I was actually thinking about that a little while ago, about how in one of the first episodes, Commander had mentioned that she basically transfers Ben and Betty around wherever she wants, wherever they're needed, and we only saw them in security once, and then they've just kind of been in those default outfits. I guess they have been doing random projects, but I honestly thought that was going to be more a bit of theirs, where you might see them in different outfits every few weeks in a different department. And I was a little disappointed that it never ended up happening in any way. But so it was kind of nice to see them actually acting as that when they were security guards to take the Rangers comms. I actually didn't know Steel wore one. I never noticed that before, which is just kind of funny. But I just wanted to drink, bring attention to that because I meant to mention that a couple times weeks ago when Ben and Betty were doing their shenanigans. And they randomly transported a bunch of places because they ended up in a, a bit where they took one of the transporters and it cracked in the door, so they were just going all over the place. And I honestly thought they first ended up in Evox Dimensions, but they just ended up like at a volcano area, which looks like that one dead earth from The Flash and then a bunch of different places and they ended up at the end. I actually also thought it might have been a more important plot point. Like I thought at the end, and other than just like, oh gosh darn, we're covered in dimensional goo. You know how it is. I thought they were gonna say, oh, we were in Evox's dimension for a second and here's what we found out, or it was gonna lead into a cliffhanger or something. Just because we're going into the penultimate episode, so I thought something might happen with that. Speaking of, even though I like this episode, and I do like that there was some villain momentum, so there's like clear momentum going towards the villain plan, I, and I think they're doing better than Ninja Steel was, but I still feel a little bit weird by the fact that we're so close to the finale and we're not feeling like it in a way, if you know what I mean. We'll see how next week feels. I definitely hope next week feels like a penultimate episode outside of like the last few seconds leading into the finale because I think it's better when PR seasons, the last chunk of episodes, you feel like you're in this final arc. And like I said, I think they did a better job here than Ninja Steel, but I still think it could be better in that respect. Because right now, it feels like the villains are kind of gearing up for the finale, but the Rangers aren't really doing a whole lot with that. But yeah, that's about it I have to say for this one. Um, overall, I did enjoy this episode, though. I thought it was very fun and enjoyable. Good Steel episode of him showing, you know, just being entertaining, but his showing his heroic side and getting to take care of a dog, which he gave away at the end, which I thought was kind of unnecessary. But I thought it was a good episode for him. Kind of a fun episode for a couple moments and a good episode for the villains. So I'd overall give it an 8. Anyway, until next time, if you like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell so you can get notifications for all my videos. Thanks, guys. Dawson Ryder, signing out.